Well, they say war is said to be a failure of diplomacy. If this is, in fact, the start of a trade war between China and the United States, uh, it would seem there are a lot of failures which led to this point. Uh, the mood I pick up here in Beijing is that uh, China uh, has a high degree of national resolve about this. The official press is full of stories about the resilience of the national economy, um, their attitude to the visit to Washington by Vice Premier Liu He for these trade talks is one where he goes uh, with uh, an open mind to negotiate a good outcome, but he also carries a sword in his sleeve. That is, he's not about to be ambushed. Uh, and therefore, China has a capacity also to walk away from these talks. So it's high stakes poker, but that's the way President Trump likes to play it as well, it seems. In the past 20 years or so, there has been this sort of predictable consistency with regards to US-China trade. The more the Chinese made, the more the Americans would buy. Every couple of years, Washington would complain about unfair trade practices. Beijing would announce a few reforms, but no one was looking. Everything would go back to the way it was for the most part. You know, there was agreement out there. It needed to change. But is this Trump tariff approach? Is this the right approach? Or was it like swatting flies with a sledgehammer? Well, tariffs are lousy economic policy, um, and I say that as a former Prime Minister from the centre-left. And it's lousy economic policy because it hurts working people everywhere, because it increases prices on goods which working families uh, need to purchase. Uh, and secondly, it depresses overall uh, trade growth and economic growth as a result and has a bad impact on jobs. But President Trump is uh, not an economist, uh, he's a politician. And what he's sought to do is to use tariffs as a political instrument to grab Beijing's attention. Peter Mendelssohn is a uh, Labour Party politician in the British Parliament. He's also president of an international think tank called Policy Network. He talked about the concerns many have around the world with this Trump approach to trade. Listen to this. All of us in the rest of the world have to understand that when two great elephants in the room, like the United States and China, you know, start fighting, uh, all the rest of us are in danger of being trampled underfoot. In Europe, we share much of that analysis. We share much of that diagnosis about Chinese policies, but we don't agree with and don't support uh, the uh, very confrontational and unilateral measures uh, that President Trump uh, is now envisaging. Yeah, there's already been a significant cost to American business, to American consumers, despite what President Trump says. But what's the fallout for the rest of the world here? The, you know, the spectators on the sidelines as these two economies slug it out. There's a long-term damage here uh, to the global economy. Remember, so much of growth for the world in the last couple of decades has been led by trade growth. It's always exceeded by a factor of two or three, the speed of economic growth. Now we're having trade What's next? Well, the bottom line is both these political leaders have got domestic politics uh, to handle as well. Domestic politics is not just a Trump challenge. He's obviously appealing to his political base by various of the strategies and tactics that he's adopting and sounding tough on trade, sounding tough on tri China, and as it were, uh, threatening tariffs at one minute to midnight. Uh, pulling something out of the classic Trump negotiating book. Uh, all of this is to make Trump look hairy-chested with his domestic political audience. The problem is it assumes that Xi Jinping, on the other side of this equation, doesn't have his own party politics to contend with as well. And there are no votes in the Politburo for being seen to be weak in backing down to the United States. And therefore, uh, the message in the official Chinese media has been quite clear in recent days, which is China's economy is resilient, China's not desperate for a deal, um, and, if, uh, and 
of tariffs were imposed by the United States uh, in uh, a very short period of time, then China would retaliate. So uh, Xi Jinping has got to manage his domestic politics as well. For the longer term, can we craft an effective US-China relationship? The big question, which none of us know the answer to, is if and when there is a trade deal, what does Donald Trump then do with the rest of the US-China relationship? beyond trade into the general economy, in national security and foreign policy and human rights, etc. Um, will he, as it were, protect the relationship and keep it on a more stable course? Or will he allow the neocons within his administration to unfold a much more aggressive strategy towards China? That is what we don't know. And frankly, these are going to be very difficult and trying times ahead on the broader relationship. Kevin Rudd. Thank you so much for being with us. We really appreciate it.